the next thing we're going to make is called a black cow cake. I have the recipe here. This is something I have never made. Um, a friend of mine watches Rachel Ray, um, I think it's on Wednesday mornings. She has on her TV show uh, some like two or three ingredient recipes that she has them, you know, they make on her show. And one of the things that they had was a black cow cake. And I thought, well, you know, that sounds interesting. Black cow is usually chocolate and root beer. So the ingredients for this one is, like I said, it was a two ingredient thing. It's a um, chocolate cake. And I actually chose a devil's food cake mix because I kind of like devil's food cake. So I thought, well, I'm going to try it with that and see how that works. And then A&W root beer um, is just happens to be the kind that I chose. I used to love A&W root beer. There was an A&W root beer stand here that you could drive up and get a cold, cold A&W. And we'd go, go to the beach and then come back and get a cold A&W. I loved that. Now, the first thing that you do anytime you're going to bake a cake is you have to preheat your oven. And all that is, is you're simply going to turn your oven on to bake. And then you, this one says preheat it to 350 degrees. So we turn the oven temperature to 350. And then the other thing you need to know is when you're baking a cake, you want to make sure that your burner, I mean, that your um, rack in your oven is in the middle position. So we make sure that that's there and we don't look at our dirty stove. I'm working in somebody else's kitchen. It's nasty. <laughs> okay. Um, so it says we take one box of chocolate cake mix. And then we're going to open that up and put it in our bowl. Okay, better safe than sorry. We'll open this up with a knife. Don't want to pull it open and it go exploding everywhere. That would not be good. Okay. Come out, come out. And then it says a 12 ounce bottle of root beer. Well, that obviously is a much bigger bottle of root beer. So we'll get our measuring cup here. All right, on my measuring cup, fortunately, it tells me exactly where 12 ounces is. And it says 12 ounces is really close to one and a half cups of liquid. So I'm gonna open up this bottle. And I'm going to pour 12 ounces. Mm, that smells so good. There we go. Okay, and when you're pouring it, it's going to foam up a little bit. <clears throat> So we need to let it settle and make sure we've got a full 12 ounces after the foam goes away. Pour a little bit more in there. There we go. Okay. And the recipe says, put the cake mix and the root beer together. and then mix that up. Ooh, that's fizzing. It's really interesting. Okay, and again, I'm going to start really slow. Actually, I think I'll mix that up just a little bit by hand. It's funny the way that's reacting. It's, the, it's no longer liquid. It's all foam. So we'll mix it up just a little bit so that we don't get a big poof. There we go. And then I start on the very lowest setting. And you 
usually on cake mixes, you don't want to mix it a lot. You just want to mix it until all the dry ingredients have mixed in. So we'll do that. And we're supposed to, I should have done this first because it said to grease our, our pan. But I use um, Pam to grease it with. And all you do is just spray the bottom. Make sure it's coated really well. And I also spray the sides. And this is a non-stick pan, but you always prepare your pan, even if it's a non-stick pan, because sometimes they stick. I've got that oil all over my hands, so I'm going to dry that off. And we'll get a spoon here. We'll get every last bit out. smells good and again if you were here I'd let you lick the beaters just pour that in it's really thick This is one of those things that takes, I have really small hands and it's not easy to hold on to this. So you may need some help from your sisters or from your mom or your dad. Dads are good at this too. Oops, I almost dropped it. <laughs> that would not have been fun. I'm going to use my fingers. It's nothing like getting in there. Okay. I think we've done good. And then we make sure, let's spread this out just a little bit. My oven is not quite heated up yet, but as soon as it's heated up, and I should have waited until it was heated up before I mixed that, but as soon as it's heated up, I'm going to stick it in and we cook it for 35 minutes. And I will tell you, you have to be really careful when you're baking a cake. Um, you don't want to, uh, like if I was making something else on top of the stove, because my, my um, oven is on the um, right underneath the stove. I wouldn't want to do anything to shake the oven because cakes will fall if they're, they're kind of delicate when they're baking. So you want to make sure that you're you're not doing something that will shake the counter or shake the oven. Um, so I would be real careful with anything else that I was doing. And then the other thing is not all ovens will cook the same temperature. So you really need to check your cake ever so often. You don't want to open the door because that'll also make the cake fall. If the cold temperature from the outside gets on the inside, it'll make the cake fall. You just want to kind of keep an eye on it. And you know, about 10, five to 10 minutes before it's supposed to be done, look at it and see what it looks like. A cake that is done, if you touch the top of it, it will kind of like spring back. Um, you can also test it with a toothpick and I'll show you how we do all of that in just a little bit. But I'm going to turn the video off now and as soon as it's ready, I'm going to put it in. As a matter of fact, my, my oven is ready right now, so I'll go ahead and put it in. Let's do that. And we're going to set the timer for, I'm going to, it said 35 minutes, but I'm going to set it for 30 minutes just to double check. And I'm going to stop the video and we'll come back in about half an hour and check it. Okay, we've got about 15 more seconds left for our cake. And I want to show you, I turned the light on in the oven, and I don't know if you can see, probably not. You probably can't see inside of there, but there goes the beeper. And what I do is I take a toothpick, okay? I don't know if you can see that toothpick. Oh, probably not, but anyway, you know what a toothpick looks like. And we very carefully, I need some pot holders here, we're very carefully going to open the door because if you do it too fast, your cake might fall. 
but let's open the door. Look at the beautiful cake in there. And we want to be really careful. This is probably where you need to get an adult involved. And I'm going to just touch the top of it, and it does spring back. Now I'm going to take my toothpick and stick it kind of in the middle and pull it back out, and it's perfectly clean when I stick it in there and pull it out. So that means my cake is done. And remember, I told you that not all ovens cook exactly alike. Well, this one didn't cook for 35 minutes. It cooked for 30 minutes. All right, there's our beautiful cake, and we want to be really careful. Don't drop it, because it'll collapse on us. Stick that back in there. Okay. Now, this is a nonstick pan, and normally on a nonstick pan, when you empty the cake out, it's going to just, oh, there goes our timer. It's time to take it off. Um, normally, it's it will come right out. Well, I shouldn't say normally. It's supposed to come right out, but occasionally they don't. So one of the things that we always do is just loosen it a little bit from the sides, and actually when I put my little uh, knife down in there. It feels like it's totally loose from the side. Well, almost totally loose from the sides. This is the most nerve-wracking part of doing a cake is, is turning it over and getting it out of the pan because you just hope and pray that it's not going to stick to your pan and separate all out. Oh, now there's an easy way to do this. I'm going to show you. Um, I said earlier that normally what I would do is put this out on a rack and what I mean is like a cookie sheet, um, a cookie cooling rack. It's kind of um, crisscrossed and it's open and it's ventilated and it's kind of up off, off of the, um, uh, stands up off the counter a little bit so it lets your cake cool but I don't have one because I'm at somebody else's kitchen. So we'll just do this. We're going to empty it out onto the cake plate that we're going to put it on. And I just take that cake plate and put it right over the top and that pan is still hot, so we're going to just take it and flip it right over. Now, when I put that down, I did not put that down. That's a hot cake pan. I didn't put it down directly on the counter. I put it on something because it's, like I said, it's hot. And this is going to loosen right up, and there it is. There's our beautiful cake. Oh, I wish you were here and could smell it. It smells so wonderful. So, and it doesn't say to put any icing on it or anything, but I'm going to wait for it to cool a little bit because it's still very, very hot, and then we'll take a bite of it.